that you have to own own it. You have to own it yourself or have access to it. You have to own it through trustworthy people like yourself, like ourselves, people who have pledged themselves to try to get people to get into precious metals for all the right reasons for the last 10 or 11 years or even longer for that matter. So it's, um, I, I love coming to conferences like this. I'd like to be more of a spokesperson for silver and gold. Um, I ch I'm always trying to encourage Canadians to own it. We've created lots of different funds that they can invest in. And um, that has been the way, it's, I mean, it's shocking that it's been the best asset for the last 11 years and we can still hardly <laughs> muster up um, a real surge of common interest in it, but it's coming. But, I mean, you've reached out beyond Canada. Your PHYS and PSLV are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Right. Right. And so people from all over the world can participate yes, in, can. Your, in your funds. They can. And I'll tell you one of the latent things in uh, silver. When we sold uh, the Silver Trust, we raised four, uh, 550 million. When we sold the Gold Trust, we raised 440 million. So again, it's another example of people being more willing to buy uh, silver than gold. And I would say if I was prepared to sacrifice the premium on, on PSILV, which I'm not, uh, compared to the 300 we just rose, uh, raised in gold, I could do multiples of that in silver. If, if the physical silver were available? If it was available and I was willing to sacrifice the premium. I'm not willing to sacrifice the premium. Yeah. And I have to find ways that we can do it without sacrificing the premium. But I know the demand is there. Yeah. yeah. Is it retail or is it institutional or both? I would say it's mostly uh, institution. Uh, sorry, mostly retail. Both times when I've done the circuit trying to sell these uh, issues, uh, certainly on the IPOs, it's probably been 80 to 90 percent uh, uh, retail. I was very much shocked, and when I tried to tell the silver story, that I wasn't getting much resonance with institutions whatsoever. In fact, very few of them had even looked at it. People who invested in gold already hadn't even looked at silver. Hmm. So I kind of know that that's coming. You know, it's just yeah. like you recommending gold in 2000 and some people coming along in 08, such as John Pauls and then David Einhorn buying gold and everyone, oh my God, it must be a good investment. Yeah. But they're eight years late to the party, right? But still early in terms of oh, where the bull enough, market's going to go. And they've done very well by it, and they will do well, of course, going forward. But yeah. it takes that kind of time period for people to kind of latch on to it. You know, th it's interesting the point you raise about silver, and I think I may have a, an answer as to why the, the lack of interest is there. It's, you know, every bull market has three stages, and in that first stage you see apathy and neglect and disbelief. Silver's still in stage one. I, it's been my point that we're not going to go into stage two until we're over 50 bucks, right. which was the January 1980 high, and I think that's likely to happen here in the not too distant future. And once that happens, then that's going to go onto people's radar screens, and you go into the second stage of right. silver's market so maybe in a year's time yeah. when you make that circuit yeah. uh, you're gonna get a lot well, more interest than you do at the I, present. I can feel the difference already right I mean it was a year ago almost a year ago we did the Yeah I mean who thought $50 silver a year right. ago was possible other yeah. than you know, a couple of people like ourselves. It was quite predictable <laughs> I thought anyway. When it comes to markets nothing's predictable no, I, but it was an easy call. Yeah it was easier than most. Yeah, I mean, okay, I just, there you, go. you looked at the history and said, oh my God, if this thing goes back to 24, it's going to 50 almost automatically. Yeah. And it did. Yeah. And it did it almost in the time frame that you would have imagined. And so when I was on the road show, I said, if it goes through 24, it's probably going to 50 in like four months. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it took six. Yeah. Well, who's going to argue over a couple of months, right? Yeah, particularly given the double in price. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they'll, I think they'll, the investors are coming around to it. It's, I was actually in a little in, in dismay when I've been listening to some of you know, the, the bubble vision, and like every third guy likes gold now or is willing to admit that maybe he, you, know, you could have gold in your portfolio, which was disturbing, having gone through the 11 years when no one would even mention it or as a barbarous relic or whatever. And, and, and so I kind of monitor now how many people talk about silver. Mm -hmm. There's not many. Mm -hmm. But you can see it creeping into the conversation. So. But gold is in the second stage of its bull market oh, since yeah. it went over two th uh, over 1,000 an ounce. So you're likely, you can expect to have more people talking about it. Sure. But the question is not talk, but whether they're doing it. Yeah. And given the fact that this percentage of assets is still 0.75%, right. yeah. which I keep coming back to, right. it shows that this is an under-owned asset yeah. compared to, say, the U.S. dollar, which is an over-owned sure. asset. Yeah. They're going to come back. I mean... You know, it's very, having dealt with uh, large institutions and pension funds, they're so rigid in their programs, you know, that they can hardly consider owning something physical. I mean, it's so against the grain of what their advisors are telling them. 
But, uh, you know, gold having gone up by whatever it is, 700% here, I mean, the advisors are coming around, and of course, seeing silver up and seeing all the other commodities go up. They're finally giving some uh, credence to investing in that area, and it'll be slow. I mean, we saw the first example of, I think it was Texas Teachers. By well, I was going to ask you about that. Was that sort of a watershed event, and that sort of added oh, yeah. some legitimacy to the sector yeah. and the institutional investor side? Well, I think John Paulson going into GLD, David Einhorn buying physical, um, the Texas Teachers buying physical, those are huge eye openers, and um, and some of the central banks stepping in to buy gold mm -hmm. are sea changes in what's going on out there, and it makes it more acceptable for the mainstream to come in, who never even considered it before. Okay, but it's still a tough, tough sell. I can't tell you how difficult it is. Let's go back to something you just uh, mentioned a couple of minutes ago about gold going up. Thirty-two dollars in one day, beyond the the two percent, right. which you know, right. GATT has contended that you have a, a certain mechanisms where the intervention occurs. It's either one percent or two percent. Right. This is the first two percent day this this yeah. year. Yeah. Is it an indication, in your view, that maybe the people who have been trying to keep the gold price suppressed are just losing control? Yeah, I have no doubt that they are losing control, um, particularly when you have these people like Mexico and South Korea and us raising 300 million, we're all coming into the physical market. Mm -hmm. And so the paper market can't deal with it. I mean, we have not had an increase in mine production hardly in the last 11 years. And I know they're uh, expecting an increase this year, but when you look at some of the semi-annual reports, I mean, these gold companies are having a tough time increasing production. They're starting to miss their estimates. So I think it's a sign that uh, they're losing the battle and I, do, I don't know how the managed retreat is going to be. I'm sure you'll explain that to us. But, <laughs> well, uh, eventually the managed retreat turns into a you know, total shambles and they yeah. just run for cover, first man, you know, yeah. um, uh, is the one who's going to be saved. Yeah. So It's sort of interesting, James, when you think back to, you know, you were on board when gold was at its low of 250. Well, just think of a $32 price change in a 250 item. Yeah. I mean, it's a staggeringly large gain if you just would stay the course. And that's how the investment becomes exponential after a while. Mm. Like a, um, a, a dollar twenty move in silver to someone who bought it at $5, that's 24% in a day. 